Lord, that you've given me, Lord, and I just, um, Lord, pray that you will give me the words to speak, Lord. Lord, that people will be blessed, Father, Lord, that we will receive something today, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Right, so, praise God. Amen. Um, <clears throat> I really do thank God, actually, because when I was preparing this message this week, um, I was upstairs in my room, on my desk, and um, I was praying and I was asking God, you know, what have you got in your heart to put in my heart to give to the church? Yes, and um, thank you. And um, nothing was happening. <laughs> nothing was coming. <laughs> I thought, oh, this isn't good. <laughs> anyway, what was quite funny was there was washing up that needed to be done. And um, my wife is, does so much in the house and I need to do more, so I'm trying to do more. So I thought to myself, okay, I'm going to go and wash up. And during the washing up time, I'm going to pray and ask God. And do you know what? God, as I was washing up, revealed to me what to preach. Amen. So sometimes you've got to do what you've got to do. Yes. There's stuff that needs doing. Do that stuff. And God will reveal to you what he wants to reveal to you. Amen. Praise God for that. Amen. Amen. And I praise God even more because basically the topic of my message is evangelism. Amen. And what's interesting, while I was praying, is I believe that God was saying to me, like, what is your passion? What is your calling? You know, and preach on that. Because obviously that's a lot easier to preach on than, you know, the book of Job or something, you know, <laughs> that, you don't, that you don't really know about. <laughs> anyway, so it's about evangelism and uh, the songs that we sang, what Pastor said, are all relatable to evangelism. Pastor said, I wrote it down. Salvation has come to this house. Amen. Well, salvation. Evangelism is telling people the good news of Jesus and having salvation. So, you know, God already converted and found his word. Amen. So I'm really, really thankful for that. Um, okay, so evangelism. For me, the first thing that came into head when I'm thinking about evangelism is Genesis chapter 1, which is the creation of the world. Because as we know, many people believe in different things. Some people believe that a big bang created the world. You know, bang! And the world is gone. I say to them people, any other bang causes destruction. You have a bomb in the house, that's not going to make anything. That's going to cause destruction. I mean, <clears throat> you look at the, these words on here, yeah? Now, would you believe me if I said that these words all of a sudden, from a bang, over millions of years, they all came together, they wrote perfect sentences, they put pictures in beautiful, you know, pictures, if there was pictures in this Bible, but there's not. Could that have happened by chance? Or did someone with wisdom, with creative power, put these words together? Yes, someone great. And it's like, if you see a painting, if you see a painting, what was there? A painter, exactly. So if you see creation, what was there? Yeah. A creator, exactly. Well, it wasn't nothing and then a bang happened. But that's, that's my um, view. Uh, and also, the other interesting thing about creation is you look at our fingerprints on our hands. You know that every fingerprint on one person's hand is different. Yeah. Not only is every fingerprint different on one person's hand, it's different on everyone's hand. You know, how many millions of people are there that live? That's why the police take the fingerprint if you do something wrong. Because it only belongs to you. Uh, it, let's turn to Genesis chapter 1. Verse 1. So it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty and darkness covered the deep waters. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw, um, saw that the light was good. Um, then God said, let, verse six, let the space between the waters separate from the heavens and the earth. Um, it's actually quite a long verse, but basically, the, the point of what I'm trying to say in this Genesis is 
when we're sharing our faith, it's good to know the basics, you know, and the first basic is the creation of the world. So we know we've got created the light of the heavens. And then obviously on the where are we? Um, on the sixth day, God created man and let's turn to that. That's the sixth day, six days first. Oh, verse 26, yep, so verse 26 it says, And God said, let us make man in our image. So already we know that the image of man is the image of God. I was watching something on YouTube the other day that said, uh, actually it was South Park, funny program, but basically in this cartoon it was saying that, I think it was taking the myth of evolution, it was saying that there was, a, there was a small fish in the sea, and all of a sudden it mutated to grow legs, then it mutated again to be able to breathe out the water. Then it mutated into a monkey. Then it muta mutated into a human. And I was thinking, even this cartoon knows it's not wrong. You know? And the kids were laughing at the teacher, teaching them this stuff. And I was thinking, yeah, it, it makes no sense. So let's get uh, but we know that in, this Bible, in, in the Word of God, which is the truth, it says that God made us in his image. Um, and then it says, God said, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and the fowl of the air and so on and so on. Um, and God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. Which is another blessing because if Adam and Eve and their kids did multiply, that's the end of the world. So that is one of our responsibilities to produce. So, um, evangelism, this is what we're talking about. So one thing I find with evangelism is sometimes when you uh, are talking to people at work or, you know, even about creation or stuff like that, you can go around in circles. You know, they will say, no, evolution is true. Um, you know, there was a bang, this did happen, it's scientific. And a lot of people say to me as, uh, at work as well, they say, if you believe in God, you don't believe in science. I was like, that is rubbish. There's many Christian scientists, and a lot of science actually proves the Bible. You know? Um, so, what I like to do, because um, it's funny, what, what someone said to me is they said, um, uh, actually, we'll come back to this in a minute. Um, what one good way of showing someone evangelism is the Ten Commandments. So, please, can you put up that um, Ten Commandments? I don't know if any sound has come out of this, is it coming? Mm -hmm. Oh, it is. <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take this off. Hmm. Right. It's coming. Um, Basically, let me, let me give you an example while this thing was coming up. So, someone at work said to me that um, they're not as bad as some people, like Hitler, for example. Yeah, Hitler killed millions of Jews, um, you know, and then they talk about rapists, murderers, and they, and they say to me, I'm not that bad, you know. But think of it this way, say so you've got two cups, yeah? One cup has got one drop of poison in it. It's a little tiny drop, you just drop a little bit. The other cup is full of poison. Now, if I drink the one drop, or I drink the, the cup that's full of poison, are they both going to kill me? Yeah. Yes, they're both going to kill me. So that is an analogy of if you think you're not that bad, it doesn't matter. That's it, it's still going to kill you. Yeah? yeah? So um, that's what I try and say to that, that work. Uh, the commands are. Um, Yes, thank you, Pastor. Yeah, I've written that down, sir. Let's go to Exodus 20. But it will come up in the. Um, thing as well. um, yeah, let's read the commands while we're waiting for this uh, thing to come up. So, Exodus 20, verse. Basically, 
basically what I was trying to say with um, if, with the commands is oh we've got it excellent praise God actually what we'll do is we'll, we'll go through it I don't know if I've got enough wire here right so basically what I'm trying to say and I'm going to get Evangel up in a minute to give an example but um, instead of like arguing with people, what we do is we take them through the law. Because basically, if, if you don't know that you're in danger, why do you need to say that? That's the point. Okay. So this, this um, thing that I found on the internet, basically it's a really cool um, uh, picture of how to remember the Ten Commandments. Okay? So as you can see, number one is the, the shape of a medal, you know, if you become first. And it's, you shall have you know, other gods before me. That's the way we remember that. Number two is, see that person, he's bowing down in the shape of a two to an idol, which is, you shall not make yourself an idol. Okay? Number three, that is someone's lips, if you can work it out, and then the shape of a three, which is, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. So, you, you, you know, you don't say, oh, Jesus, you know that. And a lot of people at work say that, and it really annoys me when they say it. And I say to them, why do you say Buddha or Mohammed or... Krishna, Krishna. And they like us because Jesus is the only one still alive. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> and then number four, we've got uh, a kid watching TV. And the one is remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So don't stay at home watching your telly. Come to church. <laughs> number five is honour your father and mother. And that's the father and the mother in the shape of a Which is, you know. <clears throat> Number six, do not kill, and that is a bomb in the shape of a six. So you should you shall not kill. Number seven, we've got a heart with the seven in the middle, which is you shall not commit adultery because if you do, you're going to break someone's heart. Yeah. Okay. Number eight is a burger, a burger, burger <coughs> with an eight as its mask. See, <laughs> you shall not steal. Yeah. Number nine, you've just got a nine lying down, which is, <laughs> you shall not lie. <laughs> and number ten, you've got someone peeking through a door at someone's ring, like a gold ring or diamond, you shall not covet. You shall not covet means, do not want what others have. So, if someone's got a nice diamond ring, be thankful for what you've got. Don't covet their ring. Um, so yeah, so this is what we're taking through. So if I can advance manager to come up. We haven't practiced this, so it could go, it will go well. <laughs> so this is just an example. So oh, so there's so many different ways to preach and um, to evangelize, and obviously you are led by the Holy Spirit. Um, but sometimes you get into a situation where it is like argument and you go around in circles and blah blah. So this helps get to the point, gets to the heart. This is what you should do. So, Nigel, uh, I don't know if you can pretend that you are an atheist. But <laughs> <laughs> so you don't believe in God. Right. So, Nigel, um, do you believe you're a good person? Yes. Yes. If you were a Christian, what would you say? Uh, I'm a Christian? Yeah. Um, God has made me good? Yes. <laughs> so, that's good because you know, if, God, if he wasn't an atheist, he probably would have said, God has made me good. But most atheists or people that don't believe in God will say, yes, I'm a good person. You know, according to their standards, they believe they're a good person. So if he's an atheist, he believes he's a good person. So I say to him, have you ever lied? Yes. What does that make you? What do you call someone that lies? A liar. A liar. Have you ever sold anything? Yes. And if you said no, you could say to him, are you lying to me? What's that mean? Give you a thief. Okay. Now Jesus said, if you look with lust at another person, you've committed adultery in your heart. Have you ever looked with lust at another person? So what's that mean? An adulterer. Adulterer. Okay, so we've only looked at three of the Ten Commandments. Obviously, you don't have to take them through all of them, but we've looked at three, and so far you confess that you are lying. Uh, a lion feeding a dog truck. So, do you believe that you would go to heaven or hell? There is no heaven or hell. 
Yes, I mean, they could say that. <laughs> Most people say, might say, oh, well, I guess if there is heaven, now I'll go to hell. Okay. Yeah, based on that, based on what you said, mm -hmm. God's standards. Yeah. I'm going to tell you. Yeah. So as you see, God's standards is higher. Compared to when people look at themselves with their standards, they think they're good. But when you go through the commandments, that is trying to reveal what their heart is actually like. And then obviously you say to them, like, um, do you know what God did for you? <coughs> That's what <laughs> um, Well, basically, um, think of it like this. Say you're in, a, in a, a court of law, yeah, and you've got those speeding tickets or, or you've done wrong, and the judge is, is, is pronounced you guilty. So the judge is like, you're guilty. And then someone comes in, Jesus Christ, and says, I'll pay that fine. And then the judge says, and the judge represents God, the judge says, okay, because Jesus is willing to take your place, is willing to pay your fine, you can go free. And that is the gospel message. So because of Jesus, if you put your trust and faith in Jesus, it's not just believing in him, it's putting your faith and trust in him. Like a parachute, like you jump out of a plane and you think, I'll be alright, I'll flap my, I'll flap my hands, <laughs> you're going to die. So you put the parachute of Jesus Christ, because even the Bible says, well, you're robed in the righteousness of God. You put on that parachute, when you jump out of that plane, you're fine. You know? Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then in, um, in Romans chapter 2, verse 4, it actually says that the goodness of God leads us to repentance. Now, repentance means to change your way. So if you're going the wrong direction, you're going away from God. Repentance means to turn to God, ask God for forgiveness of your sins, and that's repentance. But what's interesting is a lot of people believe that God is out to get you. You know, he's, uh, he's going to punish you, he's going to send you to hell. But, it, but the Bible says that the goodness of God leads us to repentance. Um, and then they can see, you know, when people see their sin, then they realise they need a saviour. If they don't see their sin, I say to some people work and say, they say, why do you always talk about Jesus and stuff like that? And I say, if you see someone walking off the edge of a cliff, are you going to not save them? Or are you going to warn them? You know? So, that's why we need to evangelize. Um, and then, if we turn to 1 Corinthians verse 6. Now, Evangelism is not easy because you are actually putting your um, your faith and your heart on the line. You know, and, and I'm the same, like, there's times when God asks, tells me to do something, well, I think that maybe I should do this, and I, and I, and I haven't. You know, and I ask God for forgiveness because there's many opportunities that prevent present himself. Like yesterday when I was at work, there was this guy that I was talking to on my delivery, and he had, like, he said he had pain in his wrists, like, he had arthritis or something. No, and after I left, like carried on my work, I thought to myself, why didn't I ask to pray for him? You know, just a simple, can I pray for you? Um, but yeah, I missed that opportunity. But that opportunity could have led to, you know, God healing him, and then he, he actually um, wanted to know more about Jesus. What chapter was it? Yes, sorry, well, so I want to bring to chapter 6. 6 verse 9 to 11. So the scripture says, Don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in sexual sin or who, be, or who worship idols or commit adultery or are male prostitutes or practice homosexuality or are thieves, or greedy people, or drunkards, or that are abusive, or cheap people, none of these will inherit the kingdom of God. So, because in this culture at the moment there's a lot about homosexuality and LBGT and stuff like that, but, and a lot of people think that we are, Christians are against these people, but as, the, as this scripture says, it's sin that God's against. 
it's not about groups of people. And in, in this scripture, it, it, it mentions all the different things, you know, sexually immoral, drunkards, thieves. But the point is that God made a way that sent Jesus so that we wouldn't have to, you know, leave our sin. I mean, the next verse, number 11, says, Some of you were once like that, but you were cleansed. Hallelujah. You were made holy, you were made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So they, were, they were cleansed, they were made right by calling on the name of Jesus. And then, so a few topics that came to mind when I was thinking about evangelism was creation, which we talked about, sin, which we talked about, and the other one is Jesus is God. It's quite an important one. There's some faiths that believe that Jesus is just a prophet. Yeah. He's not God. So we're just going to look at a few scriptures that talk about Jesus as God. So in John chapter 14, verse 9 to 14, we don't have to go there, but basically in that verse it says, if you have seen me, Jesus talking, you have seen the Father. Yeah? So that's, that's why evidence of Jesus is God. And then, um, and in the same, actually let's turn to John 14, because there's a lot of good stuff in there. Yeah, let's turn to it. Because I've got a few verses that, um, that sort of relate to it. John chapter 14. It's good to read the word of God. So John 14, verse uh, yeah, 6. Oh, so, yeah. So Jesus told, told him, so this is another bit about evangelism. It says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So Jesus is saying there, Lots of, um, there's lots of religions supposedly that say they all go to God. But Jesus himself straight away said, no, I am the way, the truth and the life. Yeah. Yeah. No other prophet said that. Muhammad didn't say that. Buddha didn't say that. Only Jesus said, I am the way. Right. And then in verse 7 he said, if you had really known me, you would know who my father is. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, Show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus replied, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and yet you still don't know who I am? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So why are you asking me to show you to you? Don't you believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? Hallelujah. Jesus ain't just a prophet. The Father is in him, and he is in the Father. The, word, the words I speak are not my own, but my Father who lives in me and does his work through me. Just believe that I am the Father. Uh, sorry. Just believe that I, that Father in me, or else believe me for the very for the very works. Oh no, sorry, I've gone from the. Sorry, I've got the. This Bible's got the New Living Translation and the King James, and I've, I've skipped from the New Living to the King James. <laughs> Let me. Sorry, let's go back. Just believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or at least believe the work you can see me do. So that's interesting as well. So Jesus is saying, believe that I'm in the Father and the Father is in me. But he's also saying, believe the work that I've done. And what work did he do? <coughs> he healed the sick. He cast out demons. He, he walked on water. So Jesus is saying, look, if you don't even believe me, what I'm saying, what about the works I've done? Um, and then verse 12 says, I tell you the truth, anyone, anyone, that's good, who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I'm going to be with the Father. You can ask anything in my name and I will do it so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So, so yeah, Jesus is God. So, yes, that's a few examples of Jesus talking about being God. Um, and what's interesting is there's a verse in the Bible where um, Mark chapter 6, 16, oh, is that 10? Let's go there, Mark chapter 10, 
where, where Jesus basically says, no one is good except God. And it's funny, because when I first heard that scripture, I thought to myself, does that mean Jesus is not good? But the point is, who is Jesus? Jesus is God. That's right. So Jesus is actually kind of speaking in a, I don't know what it is, a parable or, you know what I mean? But he's saying no one is good except God, but actually he's saying he's good. Amen. Amen. Uh, Mark chapter 10, verse number 17. Oh yeah, this is good. This is, so let's just read this quickly. Um, as Jesus was starting on his way to Jerusalem, a man came running up to him, knelt down and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? So this guy is asking about eternal life. And then Jesus said, Why do you call me good? Only God is truly good, which we know Jesus is good as well. But to answer your question, you know the commandments, which we went through. You must not, no, so even Jesus is taking him to the commandments. You must not marry, you must not commit adultery, you must not steal, you must not testify falsely, you must not cheat anyone, or your father and mother. Teacher, the man replied, I've obeyed all these commandments since I was young. Even that amazed me, right? Has this guy actually obeyed all the commandments? He said he did. But fair enough. So the, uh, you could, Jesus is never going to be stuck with someone's response. He, he's got an answer. <laughs> See, that's why we need the Holy Spirit, because every time when we evangelise, then we'll be like, well, what is the answer? that God can give us the wisdom. Amen. So then Jesus said, um, looking at the man, Jesus felt genuine love for him. There is still one thing you haven't done, he told him. Go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. Verse 22. At this the man's face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. So that's interesting. So the guy believes uh, it's been good, so he says, he's, he's fulfilled the commands. But Jesus saw that wealth had a grip on him. His love for money, his possessions, that was more in his heart than God. And then when Jesus said, give it all away and follow me, he was really sad. So I don't want to give up my Ferrari and my, my Rolex watch or whatever, you know, my big pass. And then obviously Jesus talks about his father for the rich to enter heaven. But the point is um, that there are things in each of our lives that might be stopping us from following Jesus, from receiving the eternal life God has to give us. Um, but we can overcome. So yes, so that was just a few examples of Jesus is God. Um, and lastly, just the last thing um, that I wanted to just talk about it, that came to my mind about evangelism is life after death. Now that's a big topic, you know, like what is there after death? I was even talking to someone at work yesterday and they said, when I die, that's it. And I was like, oh, that's quite sad. You know? Or someone else said, when I die, I come back as a bird. You know, some, some religions believe in reincarnation, don't they? You know, you come back as that, or, or they believe they've already lived before, before they're already alive, which, yeah, doesn't make sense, but may God help. Um, so, oh yes, so in John 3, chapter 15, because actually the most famous scripture in the Bible is John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, we know that first. But in John chapter 3, verse 15, Jesus said, if you believe in me, you will have eternal life. Which is uh, a great verse, you know? So, in a way, I'd like to put verse 15 with 16. Yeah. Don't miss that verse, and that if you believe in me, you will have to turn on. And then, um, in, let's turn to John chapter 14. It's, I was going to say it's funny, but it's not funny, but a lot of these scriptures are all in the Gospels. But it makes sense because evangelism is the Gospel. Amen. Telling people about Jesus. So in John chapter 14, verse number 1 to 3. Okay, so this is Jesus speaking. He says, Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. And trust also in me. 
There is more than enough room in my Father's home. So Jesus is talking about heaven. If this were not so, I would have told you that, sorry, if this were not so, so would, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you, so that you will always be with me where I am. Yeah, that's the end. So what a great verse. So Jesus is saying, I'm preparing, that's what Jesus is doing now, he's preparing a place for us in heaven. You know, um, and when the time is right, he will come back for us, and we will go to be with him. Amen? Amen. Is anyone excited? Yes. 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 Hallelujah. We're going to be with Jesus. Amen. But our job at the moment on this earth is to honour God and tell people about Jesus as well. Amen. So firstly, make sure we're right with God and then help lead others to Christ. Uh, and finally, um, my end point that I wrote down, which I think I've already said, is rely on the Holy Spirit. Because we can have techniques like we shared, you know, like taking people through the commandments, which helps them see their own their lack of goodness. But at the end of the day, it's the Holy Spirit will guide us. It might be something else. Like, it might be God says, gives you a word of wisdom, you know, about them, you know, to, that might open up their heart to God. It might be that they're sick and you pray for them and they get healed and they want to know more, you know. Um, and lastly, the last scripture is in Mark chapter, I think it's 16. I can't read, am I right in um, Let's have a look at Mark. Yeah, it is 16. It is, it is definitely. Mark chapter 16, verse 20. It's the last chapter, actually. Uh, verse 20. Actually, let's do verse 19. So when the Lord Jesus had finished talking with them, he was taken up into heaven. So this is showing what happened when Jesus left earth. And sat down in the place of honour at God's right hand. That's where the Bible says Jesus is at the right hand of God. And the disciples went everywhere and preached. And the Lord worked through them, confirming what they said by many miraculous signs. Yeah? So I think that's just a great way to end the evangelism topic that Jesus left the earth and is at the right hand of God, preparing a place for us. Um, the disciples were left on earth. Jesus said in another scripture, Don't worry, I'm going to send my Holy Spirit. You're not going to be on your own. The Holy Spirit will help guide you and lead you. And then what did the uh, disciples do? They went around preaching. And what I like as well, not only did they preach, their message was confirmed by. Hallelujah. Miraculous signs. Amen. So God wants to confirm his word by signs and wonders. So that is, I pray for each of us that we can preach the word Amen. and signs and wonders will follow. Amen. And many will come to Christ. Amen. So, thank you. Uh, let's just thank God for the message. Lord God, thank you Lord Jesus for this word Lord God. Thank you for helping me Lord and just pray Lord, that you Lead us and guide us, Lord, into all truth, Lord, for your Holy Spirit, Lord. And we pray for, we pray for the world, Lord. We pray for salvation, Lord, that we can touch those that are around us, Lord. That you will give us the wisdom, the words to say, Lord, the message, Lord, and that many hearts will turn to you. In Jesus' name. Amen.